If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. I made a video a couple days ago where I talked about uh, some of the police coming down to this campground over here and kicking somebody out. They were just being terrible. I mean, they tore the place up. They were harassing people. The public display of drunkenness. Uh, so, you know, there were just a lot of issues going on. And so they kicked them out. And I'll put a link to that video right here. The next day, uh, everything was smooth and fine and no, no issues. Woke up the next morning. We went into the camper, I think, around 1, 1.30. Uh, and we do that because I prepare to set, uh, post a video at 2.30, 3 o'clock. So I'm focused on what I'm doing. And so Carolyn whispers to me, they're back. And who? Who's back? Well, it was the folks that had, uh, had caused so many problems and got kicked out by the police. Before, they were parked over here when they were, you know, kind of hidden and back away from everybody. But this time, so there's our camper right there. This time, they were just parked right over here. Carolyn seemed a little agitated by the whole thing. And I, I didn't understand. Of course, you know, I'm focused on my work, so I wasn't really focused on what was going out, on outside. And she kept looking outside, and I don't know, 15, 20 minutes passed, and I said, are you worried about something? And she says, yeah. The guy keeps pacing back and forth on the road here, and he's acting all agitated. And he's Well, we decided to step outside to see what was going on. But we used the, the ruse to go to the bathroom. So Carolyn and I walked together. We walked up to the bathroom to see what was going on. And he's upset. He was up here just a little ways. And he's cussing at somebody next to him. But there was nobody there. You could see that he was cussing at someone. Her, his girlfriend was sitting over here on the park bench reading a book. But every few seconds she'd look up at him and see what he was doing. Now I know a lot of people say if I don't have video footage of it, it didn't happen. Well, I can tell you folks that believe that. If you actually stick a camera in someone's face who's actually that agitated, it's not going to end well. You won't get the footage anyways because they're going to break your camera. So, no, I don't have footage of it. There's no way I would take taken footage of it. He's pacing back and forth. He's very upset. So Carolyn and I, I asked Carolyn, I said, what's your gut telling you? Because I, I seemed okay. I didn't seem like it was a, a big deal to me. I, I wasn't up worried about it too much. I mean, we've been around him several times now. He was up at the other campground that we were at, and he's, he's been here. And I, I just recognized that he was, he was just a nuisance. Well, this time he's a little bit more agitated than what I've ever seen before. But that, I, I just wasn't worried. And I said, what's your gut telling you? And she says, I don't know. I think, I think it's, it's, it's a bad deal. I said, okay. So when we came back down from the bathroom, we started breaking down our, our truck. Uh, and it's not hard to do. All I got to do is lower two jacks. I put two jacks up underneath the truck to, to stabilize the truck. Well, all I got to do is take the jacks out throw them back in there, take the generator, throw it in the back, and strap in the refrigerator. That's all there is to it, and it takes about 15 minutes. I mean, we weren't in a hurry. I didn't feel threatened. Well, he's, he comes right behind the camper. I mean, just right behind it, and he throws the F-bomb. And I said, excuse me? I mean, I, I wasn't going to tolerate that, him cussing me out. Uh, you know, I was going to call the police and, and because now I felt like it was my my problem that he was focused his attention on me and so he said no 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 not you them well there's nobody over there that I could see and he says uh, I want you to go back and tell that cop that I didn't do anything wrong and I said I don't I don't know what you're talking about what do you mean I didn't do anything wrong I want you to go tell him that he says, I need witnesses. And I said, sir, I, I, don't, I don't know what the problem is or what they think you've done wrong. And he said, fine. So he's marching. And he's still cussing at somebody standing next to him that's not there. Well, after he said that to me, the girlfriend got up off the table and ran to him. Well, now I see the police officer back out of that, that camp spot. And I think, oh, there's a police officer here. I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not know that. He's talking to the police officer, and he shakes the police officer's hand. Well, well, we're still breaking down the camper. And I finally asked, uh, you know, I started taking the buckets of water that we have out, which is always a valuable commodity to us. And uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to dump it. Carolyn says, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to dump the water. The reason I dump the water is because water weight is really hard on the truck. I mean, it's 400 pounds that we carry around. He said, don't dump it. Let's figure out what we're doing first. Well, in my mind, I knew what we were doing. We were either going south 92 miles or north 170 miles. That's, 
and it's you know it's around 2 30 so i mean it's going to be late anyways when we get where we're going but she had a valid point if we went south south doesn't have water so we would have needed the water and i was getting ready to dump it but this is the struggle trying to figure all this out so quickly what are you going to do i mean of course you got to have a backup plan and we do we have a backup plan 92 miles south or 170 miles north that's that's really what it is so i jumped on the computer to get the directions to so I decided that we were going to go north, and he walks back to his car sitting over here, and he starts packing up. It looks like they're getting ready to leave. The cop drives by us and says, he's leaving. Everything's taken care of. He won't be back. I promise. I said, well, I said why is that? And he said, well, I promise. He won't be back. The, the police officer is absolutely right. So thank you to the Texas police officer for making a promise that he was able to keep. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the struggles of relocating uh, be, because of an emergency situation. I've talked about it a lot. And I get so many responses. Well, just go. Just leave. Just go. Just leave. I mean, 170 miles, you know, that's a four-hour, five-hour trip. Floating around a camper. It's going to be late, so 2.30, that'd be 7.30. By the time we got where we needed to be, reset up, it'd be 9 o'clock and you're tired, exhausted, you didn't get any work done that day. And remember, I have to work. The other thing is, is every time you relocate, you got to have money. You got to, you got to budget your travel costs. I budget $160. So, you know, we, last month we had to move from Mississippi to Texas. That made us go over budget. Well, now we're over budget. I got to save a little bit back this month. Well, if I'm getting ready to move, got to budget. Fortunately, we didn't have to move. I mean, I, I trusted the police officer and, and he was right. So, and, and campgrounds aren't just, you know, stacked right on top of each other. You relocate so much, that's all you're doing is relocating. You know, we relocated when we came out of Mississippi. Then they closed this side, of the, the other side of the dam down. So we had to relocate over to here. And then we're going to have to, you know, we're here four or five days. And then we're going to have to relocate. To, so there was just a lot of things you got to consider in this lifestyle that, get in the way of actually doing the lifestyle thanks for watching click like if you like the video and happy travels